imagine a dark room? That shouldn't be too hard. But at the top left corner of this room, a wooden desk and chair, a dim, flickering desk lamp, and a figure crouched over the desk. You walk closer, you realize it's a cop with shackles to his feet. On the walls, an oil smuggling ring network and its potential members. This cop died knowing there were three suspects. Bill, Chad, Joanna. On his right hand, he was holding a small piece of paper with the numbers 710-577-35. At the back of his other hand, a message. Not everything is what it seems. It's easy to judge a book by its cover. We've all done it before. But what surprises me is not the numbers or the message, but the shackles. Why would an officer tie himself down to his own office? Sometimes not everything is what it seems. A study by NYU said that within 33 milliseconds, of seeing a face, we've decided if that person is trustworthy or not. That is faster than an eye blink. The research also indicated that faces with high inner eyebrows and prominent cheekbones are considered more trustworthy. I didn't tell you what this cop looked like, did I? If I did, your unconscious biases would have crept in. But just sometimes not everything is what it seems. I'm going to give you the cop's profile instead. He grew up in a, a small town just out of Georgia with six other brothers and sisters. At the age of 16, he got involved in drugs, and it wasn't until a friend took him to rehab that he really got his act together. He went to university, studied law enforcement, and became a cop. He was reaching his potential until his wife started showing signs of dementia. Her memory was getting very cloudy. Our brains are precious, don't you think? That's why I came to Oxford to study neuroscience, but there was always one thing, one thing that really, really got to me, our memories. Let me give you an example. How many days in the year, 365 and a quarter? Who wrote Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling? But many of us forget where we last left our phones, keys, and wallets. Sometimes we remember things but sometimes we forget. Just like this cop's wife. She would sometimes call his name, but just sometimes just the number eight. But lately, lately she's been saying these three words over and over again. Car, goods, wedding. Car, goods, wedding. Car, goods, wedding. It took the cop four years to decode what those three words meant by connecting everything he knew to those words. Our brains are brilliant, but sometimes we have our limitations. Our brain can only store 10 to the power of nine bits of information in a lifetime. But we've come a long way. 
According to the University of Adelaide, our brain size has increased by 350% during human evolution. Our brain flow has increased by 600%. The Professor Roger Seymour from the University hinted that this increase was to satisfy our nerve cells for complex thinking and learning. My point is, our brains are great, but they have their limitations. What if there was another way for this cop to be able to decipher his wife's code in one year instead of four? Is there a way of unlocking human potential? If so, how? I'm not talking about a, a cyborg brain with chips at the back of our head, but knowledge is power, and power's already in our fingertips. I want to introduce you to a new concept, a way for machines and humans to work together. Not machines versus humans, but machines plus humans or brains, because that's a much more optimal integrated intelligence. And this is called augmented intelligence, IA. And I've been building IA for a number of years because IA is the new AI, artificial intelligence. What is the difference between IA and artificial intelligence? Many people believe that machines are going to replace us, it's going to automate us. In fact, a study here in 2013 by Oxford University suggested that 47% of US jobs will be automated by robots in the next two decades. But what if there was another way, a way for machines and humans to work together? Because that's more optimal. We're good at things, and machines are good at things. What if we could use IA to help this cop decode his wife's message? Because what she's been trying to say all along is the word car had a meaning, and that was oil. The word goods had a meaning, and that was smuggling. And wedding stood for ring. Oil, smuggling, ring. What did she know, or, or what was she trying to tell him? The funny thing is, is this cop's wife was a mathematician. She, she loved numbers, patterns, equations, just like John Nash. And every single morning, her husband would give her a puzzle from the local newspaper until just one day, one day, she handed him one back. And that took a form of a small piece of paper with the number 7107735345085081717718 this cop wasn't a mathematician but what if he could use ia to unlock that potential could we have more physicists like stephen hawking more writers like charles dickens or even code breakers like turing Yes, because greatness exists in all of us. We all have the potential, and all we need to do is to unlock that. Now, what I want to talk about is how we can use IA to help us unlock our biases and our compensate for memory and speed. First one is diversity of biases. We all have biases. But if emotion is related to a task, then it's beneficial. If emotion is completely unrelated to a task, it could be detrimental. And this cop was emotionally attached to this case from his past, the clues his wife's been giving him How many of you here, put your hands up, think that the suspect is the cop himself? How many of you think it's the wife? Interesting. 
I want to give you the, cop, the wife's profile. She grew up in a big city. And it was just always her and her twin brother, Bill. They were twins. Not identical, but they both were 6'1", with jet black hair. She had an oval face with kind of rosy cheeks and less prominent cheekbones and lower in her eyebrows. And her brother, Bill, had more prominent cheekbones and high in her eyebrows. But they trusted each other with everything. Even Bill was the guy who took the cop into rehab when he was 16. I'll leave that there for a moment. We all have biases, but could we can, can we possibly compensate for those using IA without taking the human element out? For example, when hiring people, can we take out components of CVs that relate to biases, age, gender, sexuality, disability, but still giving the decision to the employers or the recruiters of that company? Memory. Sometimes we remember things and sometimes we completely forget. But most of us use our phones or Wikipedia. But could we use natural language processing to analyze text or use visual recognition to detect objects and faces? Could this cop use this to help with his wife's dementia through personalized medicine or match symptoms and diseases without taking out pharmacists or doctors? Speed. There's a speed and accuracy trade-off in our brain. If you do something very, very quickly, you're more error, error prone. If you do something slower, you're less error prone. Have you realized if you move the mouse way too quickly, you might miss the icon you're meant to click? But what if we could use IA to process more information quickly so that this cop can solve his wife's codes instead of four years or one year, but one month, one week, one minute, one second, or even one millisecond? We all have potential and we're all geniuses. I want to share with you a quote by Nikita Jill, an author. We have calcium in our bones, ions in our veins, carbons in our souls, and nitrogen in our brains. 93% stardust. With souls made of flames, we are just stars with names. We are all geniuses, we're all remarkable. An IA can just take us a little bit further without having to replace us. Now, could IA help this cop decipher the codes? Could IA help him reach to become an inspector? Could IA help his wife's dementia? Could IA help us with global education, transportation? Yes. Because sometimes not everything is what it seems. Because the number 710-577-3534-5508-517718 had a meaning. And the meaning was that Bill is a boss and he sells oil. And IA is the new AI. Because just sometimes, not everything is what it seems. Thank you. <laughs>